Hi there, Marcus again from Forpass. Uh, just want to give you a brief rundown on Forpass debtors accounts or customers for that matter. Um, in Forpass, we quite proud of the way that the debtors system works and how you can quite easily set it up. Um, customers details you might say, but you know I don't really have accounts. Uh, it's not just about having accounts, it's about recording all your customers' information. Uh, for instance, in, in our own business, uh, we do all sales to accounts. In other words, we want to be able to keep a record of who the customer is, what dates that he purchased, is he a good customer, bad customer, um, is he somebody that uh, re frequently pays his bills, does he pay a, pay a COD account, uh, and so on and so on. Um, it gives you just more information about who you're actually dealing with. Now you might say, but you know, I've got a supermarket, it's a cash business. I understand. Um, you might still want to be able to keep record of the, who your customer is uh, for many, many purposes amongst, uh, and the most important most likely is uh, marketing. In other words, be able to send them a SMS or WhatsApp. A little WhatsApp group is always a good idea. Um, put all your customers on a WhatsApp group. And when there are any specials and so on, just send them a WhatsApp. It doesn't interfere with their lives. Um, they can decide to opt in or opt out of the group quite easily. Um, but they will definitely will be able to see whether there's any specials running in your business. Um, and it's, it keeps in touch with them. Um, I think it's quite important. All right, so in terms of the debtors, let's go under the debtors uh, customer details. At the moment, I've only got one customer on my database that I'm demonstrating to you. Um, let's go and create a new one. All right, so I'm going to say my invoice name is my other data or my other customer for that matter. Um, the department, you might say which department this uh, data belongs to. You might have your own departments or you might have a department within your customer's business uh, that you deal with. A responsible person. Again, you can go and put the first name in there, and this is argument's sake, Joe Soap. Um, and the telephone number would be whatever the telephone number is. And the fax number is the same. Uh, obviously, most people don't use fax numbers, so we'll have an email address, and that will be uh, Joe at Soap Company, whatever the case may be. Com. And the physical address would be number 12, Long Street, etc., etc. All right, the same with postal, PO, oh, sorry, PO box, oh, 1234, etc., etc. Obviously, you'll type in the full proper address in there. The physical address and the postal address will appear on the invoices as well as in the statements. A credit limit, you can go and put in a credit limit in there and say that this customer. I've done a credit check on him, and again, I don't think uh, a lot of customers do that these days, but I think it's still critical that you do a credit check on your customers, um, just to safeguard yourself. You do not want to deal with somebody that is uh, renowned for uh, being a bad payer, etc., etc. Quite simple, you can phone your local bank and they'll give you a code on the customer with their details, um, and you can phone the bank and get the proper... Uh, values of those codes, you know, uh, remember in the good old days of doing credit control, um, you'd get codes like a, a F and a D and an E, that type of thing, which means different things uh, for different types of customers. Alright, so let's say 50,000 for now, uh, remember the cents, and the terms, what is the customer's terms? Uh, it's a COD customer, in other words, he must pay on delivery, cash on delivery, or he's got a 30-day account or current account, uh, whatever the case may be. In your sales channels, uh, you can watch the other video about sales channels and specify how, which price your customer is paying. In this case, I'm just going to opt in for, say, sales channel number two. Uh, important that if he has a VAT number, uh, legislation states that you must put in the customer's uh, VAT number on there. Uh, so let's just type in a valid or a... Uh, a number in there at least. Alright, and that's basically my customer's details that I've created now. Uh, once you've created it, you do not need to do an update point of sale to be able to sell to that customer. Uh, in other words, the point of sale will interrogate the back office automatically. 
which also means that if you're in the point of sale system and uh, you're on the second and third and fourth terminal and you want to sell to an account and your server your network whatever the case may be is down you would not be able to access the, uh, the server therefore you would not be able to sell to a debtor in that case um, because it can and will happen most likely in the lifespan of, of your four pass our typical customers use four pass for 10 years and more um, sometimes we don't hear from them in years because everything just works um, so if it does happen that your system is down for that minute while you're busy trading with this customer or doing an invoice for him you're welcome to either save the transaction which you'll see in the point of sale system is possible save the sale or alternatively just put it through as a cash sale for now so you have a record and then uh, repost it at a later stage so for now I'm just gonna ring up something let's just uh, for demo purposes my favorite uh, 100 pipers whiskey item and let's say the customer just wants one bottle now my default keyboard layouts has been set up as you can see at the bottom here that says account sale is F6 so I'm going to click uh, F6 or I could have pressed the F6 button on it select my other customer uh, double checks for me and it says that is this the right customer I can basically press enter and now the data system or the point of sale is sitting there and saying okay I'm waiting for you now okay the sale is not complete it doesn't say complete any stage so now one more thing and it catches a couple of customers you must just press enter one more time all right and that was just to give you a final confirmation of whether that is complete to check the invoice do you wish to complete yes thank you very much do you want a receipt yes or no and it would obviously print an invoice for you um, so that you can actually send it or give it to the customer most likely you can sign for it um, you can do other things like specifying whether a council must print one or two copies of the invoice uh, one for the customer to keep one for himself let me quickly show you where that option or uh, functionality sits stall setup and security point of sale parameters um, I can go and specify a number of account prints there must be two um, oh sorry the payments must be two the account sale might be three because I might be doing deliveries um, etc etc all right and then you could also go and specify things like print customer balance on the the invoice in other words it will then print previous balance today's purchases new balance so the customer can at any time see exactly how his account is uh, running it doesn't come with any surprises at the end of the month if you want to be able to offer uh, an option for order numbers in other words your customer might be a corporate company that gives you a specific order number um, you can specify that that must be prompted for you at any at every stage and you might even say serial number reference now serial number you might say but we don't use serial numbers yes I understand but it's just a name you can use it for anything uh, in other words you can say put the delivery address in there etc etc um, on the point of sale when you finalize the sale you could have actually changed the delivery address there as well okay and that's the functionality of uh, or where you would specify the number of prints so let's carry on with the debtors if I now go back to my in the back office to my other customer and I go and do a statement for him you'll see that my invoice shows up nice and clearly on there uh, and I could print the statement out for him I could reprint the invoice etc etc and that tr uh, records will stay in uh, in the system for um, years to come how your terms would be with your customer are you going to be a customer or a person that would want a, a customer to pay you every 60 days or whatever the case would be the longer the period the higher the risk that's along the short of it uh, another thing here at the bottom here the de banking details if you want that to appear on the, uh, the invoices and statements um, again uh, set it up under general parameters uh, or general parameters there's where you'll enter your your banking details uh, how your customer or where your customer should pay the money in uh, always a good idea to put the branch code in there do not assume the customer would know what the branch code is and do not say yeah but you know my bank has got one code for everybody the customer might be paying from anywhere you would not know what that is and if you're dealing with overseas customers 
you might even want to add the Swift code in there as part of the branch number or uh, account name uh, or something like that. All right. Um, that in principle is the debtors. All right. So there's my second invoice, and I've done two invoices for the customer, both of them reflecting quite nicely on the statement. All right. Um, coming back to this balance part over here. If you do not want this to appear because it confuses your customer about the current and the 30 days and so on aging, what you can do is just simply disable it um, under store setup and security. You can go and say, um, sorry, general parameters and under my debtors, sorry, then under my debtors under option 9, open item debtors. Uh, you can actually say do not print balance due now on statement. Okay, like that one over there. Um, and that will not reflect that uh, balance due at the top. So let's just go and have a look again. So I can go look at that and have a look at the statement. It doesn't have that little line over there anymore. So the customer knows that the balance brought forward is the amount that he needs to pay. And that's a total of uh, 130, cents. Um, that's the debtors. Um, just a quick reference, I can't change it now, but we also have a uh, open item data system, which I'll explain in a different video. Um, and as I can't demonstrate it right now, because if I do want to select it, it's going to say, no, you can't change it right now. You've got to do it after a month end or when you start the system. In other words, you can't uh, in the middle of the month decide that now suddenly I want to change from balance brought forward uh, to an open item data system. So some other functionality on the data system is the ability to post uh, do electronic payments. This is for uh, when your customer has paid um, money into your bank account. In other words, it hasn't come through the point of sale. Um, and the short answer basically is you can go into a customer, you can put a narrative. So you're going to go and put in, type in their argument sake, EFT for the 14th of September argument sake. Uh, maybe put the year in as well, so it's nice and tidy. And the amount that you've, uh, that they've paid you is argument sake uh, 200 Rand, just for sake of an argument. And they've taken a settlement discount of 20 Rand. Okay. Um, you can now, you can, as you can see, the total then becomes 220 and you can process that payment. Uh, the payment comes through quite nice. Uh, in the sense that it shows the payment and the settlement amount immediately. So this customer is now in credit of 127 Rand. Okay. So the other options are the that you can obviously go and put a debit journal through. Uh, a debit journal is basically a, 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 a debit to fix a transaction that you might have done wrong. Let's assume for the moment that that debit or that payment that you've done is, is, has been incorrect uh, or you want to charge him an additional delivery fee or something like that. Literally anything that you want to add. In other words, increase the balance of your customer. All right. Uh, as arranged, whatever. Uh, again, delivery fee might, might not be a good example. You might want to put delivery fee through as a, as a product on your system so that you can also see what are you recovering in terms of delivery fee and costs versus your expenses on your vehicles and so on? Okay, so let's put in again 25 rand just for sake of my argument. All right, and I'm going to process that. And again, my debit journal comes through. Uh, as you can see, the narrative then comes through as a reference as well. And then the last one is obviously a credit journal, which is just the, the opposite of a debit journal. Monthly interest calculations is when you want to. Uh, let the system calculate interest on overdue accounts. Um, the setup of that gets done under general parameters. And just as a reminder, again, there's your uh, interest percentage per year. So theoretically, you'll type in there 26% for the year. And you'll do, uh, you have an agreement with your customer to, to raise interest from 60 days or whatever the case may be. Okay, so that's your, that's interest calculation that you would run as and when required. Um, obviously, you've got to be responsible. Don't try and run it five times a month. Big problem. Okay, monthly statements speaks for itself. In other words, you can go into the system, click on the customer, and say, I want to print it. Okay. Um, 
and it will print the statement automatically for you. Um, if you then uh, also want to do previous month statements, so I can go into the system, uh, select your customer, you can say I want, if you had more than one month, you would be able to select your months from here, or the previous month, or two months ago, or whatever the case may be, and click on it, and then be able to print from there. All right. Um, okay. Then the next option on the data is find previous statements we've just done. Find view customer history. Nice function. Uh, it allows you to go and view total history of your customers. Uh, if you had many, many months worth of transactions, you can say show full history and it will then go and uh, go through all the months and pull the transactions all up for you from whatever period you started or whenever you started, whether that's five years ago or ten years ago on 4 pos. And then uh, last option, allocate payments to invoices, is what we discussed earlier. Uh, with regards to open item debtors, you can then allocate a payment to specifically to an invoice. Um, and that will make it a lot sense. Um, just want to come back quickly then to the electronic payment. Personally, what we do and what uh, we do in our business, we do not process the electronic payments or the payments to the bank account through here. We would rather do it uh, in the point of sale program. So in the point of sale, I'll literally just go and log in on my password. Um, oh, sorry. And then I'll go, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's an option that says account payment, control F6. And I'm going to say control F6. Um, and I'll select my account. Uh, and that one specifically is already in credit. It doesn't matter. I'll proceed and I'll say that they paid me another 100 red. Um, and then how are they paying you? Well, they paid me with a check, so I can just press F4. Uh, again, in your case, you might say, um, we don't have checks. Yes, I agree. You can go and change the wording to from check to EFT payments and so on. So you wish to complete the payment. Yes, thank you. Do you want a receipt? No, thanks. Okay. System automatically logs off because I've set it up like that. If I then go back to my back office, back to my debtors, typically that will take a couple of seconds for the controller to update that transaction. Go into my account. And I'll go and do a statement there, which will then show me um, my payments once it's come through. All right. Um, again, this is what typically will happen. Okay, so while I was busy with that data, uh, the transaction was updated. So at the moment, the system says, uh, or sorry, when I open up the account, it said 102 Rand. The controller updated, so now the aging doesn't balance anymore. Not a serious problem. You simply click uh, undo and then go back in and as you can see it's updated and now my payment is reflecting properly. And that's the data system. I hope you enjoyed. Oh sorry, I um, didn't actually mention <coughs> why I'm doing all of this. Um, so once you can see your statement on here, what, what's nice about doing it this way from the point of sale is you could then go into the back office uh, again, go and say go to download reports. And then under the sales dashboard menu, I can get all my data transactions under movements. Um, in other words, I can see my invoices and my payments on one page. Okay, what my purchases were uh, and what my payments were, my payments that I've received. So you don't have to jump to between two different reports and so on. Again, it's a personal choice. You might decide that, no, I want to rather run it as uh, journals and things like that and EFTs and so on. Um, that's also fine. Again, the, the long and the short of it is, is your customer happy with uh, the, the statement that he's getting and does he know what to pay, etc., etc. All right. That's the system. Enjoy.